All right, how you guys doing? Welcome back to season six, episode fifty-one of the Fuel Show. And why is J Fuel frozen? What is he up in New York in the winter time? Is it minus ten degrees, mother? Oh, really? Oh, that was cute. All right, guys. So thank you so much for coming back here. So this is going to be our second topic, and we're just going to go straight right into it. it this is we're going to talk about SummerSlam 2021 and uh, the results. So all of us here uh, watch SummerSlam, including some of the other guys. Uh, so help me out. Uh, we got uh, OMB watched it. Rick Hart, uh, yep. uh, Rhino, um, Ishmael, and uh, Big Al. Yeah, and, uh, and of course, uh, all, all of those, I think minus Rhino, were included in the TFS Pod uh, Championship Picks. So yeah. uh, that was awesome. And actually, uh, real quick, uh, 24-7 Lou, can you let us know who won the SummerSlam TFS Pod Championship? Oh, that was uh, Ishmael. Ishmael, uh, who was in very silent, he got a point on the board. Nice. He won, he, he won the, we, we call that one the 24-7 TFS Pod Championship because that's when you win the championship for a pay-per-view itself, but not the overall championship. So it's like a mid-card. <laughs> hey, mid-card is better than no card. Oh. Hey, you know what was the win of the night? That bogey didn't win nothing. No said. <laughs> oh. All right. And, and, and just to mention to, real quick, the last time that uh, we had a, t uh, a few show episode coming out was season five, episode 50, that premiered April 19 of 2020. So, wow, that's been uh, quite a while, man. Almost a, almost a year and a half. So, yeah, what's uh, been going on? What happened? Well, as we know, COVID-19, you know. Nah, was of nah, that's just deplorable excuse. Not really, because uh, because a lot of the few show episodes that we were doing, uh, we were actually going to events, and uh, and a lot of them, well, we had interviews. So actually, the last one was uh, an interview of Izzy Mania by Big Al. That was episode fifty. So Big Al interviewed wow. Izzy Mania, but, which was. But haven't cool. you been wrestling at shows ever since? Uh, I've been wrestling with. Uh, getting away from COVID-19 and trying to escape from your silly-ass jokes. That's pretty much the only wrestling that I've been doing during COVID-19. Oh. Okay, yeah, nothing to say. Lame. All right, guys. And listen, uh, we want to let everybody know, uh, go ahead and join us on YouTube. Right now, we have 65 subscribers on YouTube, the Few Show page. So go ahead and click on that subscribe button. Click on subscribe so we can get 66 or 67 or whatever. And 24-7 uh, Lou for the TFS pod, where can they catch that? Oh, they can, they can catch TFS pod on the 24-7 Miami page. Uh, we're posting up there the, the TFS pod episodes. We record uh, weekly either about a topic or about uh, pay-per-views going on and our predictions. And see you win. Awesome. All right, guys. So right now we're about to get into SummerSlam, uh, the the picks and the predictions uh, that a lot of us uh, watch. So again, SummerSlam is the second biggest event of WWE of the year, and it was an exciting one. So we're gonna start off with the Raw Tag Team Championship, which was RKO Bro versus AJ Styles and Omos. Is it Omos? Omos. 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 How come they spell it O-M-O-S? I don't know, but that's how, they pronounce, that's how they really pronounce it, Omos. All right. Same reason, same reason people ask, why don't they spell bogey, B-O-G-I? Because it's spelled B-O-G-Y. Okay, anyway, so the recap on that one. Uh, so let's see. Bogey. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> or, or how come they call, they don't call you uh, 23... Six Lou, because you got to rest a little bit during the week. <laughs> I know, give me an hour to rest. Give me a day. Exactly. Or All why right. don't they just call the few Los Pocos? Los Pocos Locos. 
Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, a quick recap on this one. Let's see. RKO uh, and Alert uh, Omas pulled the styles to, to safety. Uh, Riddle wiped the big man out on the floor, and the Phenomenal One returned the favor. Back inside the ring, a brief back and forth gave way to the RKO by Orton and the, fir and the first title switch of the night. So RKO wow. Bro defeated Styles and Omas. So now, uh, hold on. Before you continue, bro, I got to mention this. On that Saturday, that weekend, it was a big weekend because on the night before, on Friday, on, the, on AEW, AEW had... Ooh. CM Punk come out, oh, and that wow. was like the biggest thing going on in wrestling. So you knew that something big had to happen, like in the response. Even though they say they don't watch it, in the response of uh, WWE. So yeah, it was a big night. It was a big night rolling off of what you know, seeing CM Punk back in the ring and AEW got a competitor. But yeah, I, I think that, that WWE was. Was swinging hard for the fences on this one, and yeah, let's continue on with it. It was a good, a good pay per view. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, just they, I'm just curious. I'm just They had to do some. They had to do something because uh, word was that they're. I think who is it that that they're on the network? Is it Fox? Who? WWE. They're on Fox. Yeah, they're, they're, well, they're on Fox on SmackDown and on USA Network for uh, Raw. Yeah. Yeah, I, I read that Fox was really upset about their ratings and also about that situation with CM Punk and everything and, and them <laughs> losing so much talent. And they had to bring back Brock prematurely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, well, 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 well they, brought, they brought back two people. That was important, which we're going to talk about it, I guess, right? The other, yeah. the other person, you know who it was, right? Uh, Bogey? No, one of the most controversial matches of the night. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that a little later on. But I'm just curious to know, 24-7 uh, Lou, did you get a little payout from uh, Tony Khan to mention this <laughs> during uh, the few show when we're actually talking about Summer Slam? I'm just curious no, to know. Well, did you... I didn't, but you got to put it in context of as a wrestling fan and for us that we do a show, you know, here with the few show for many years, about fan, uh, fanatics enjoying wrestling, it's a big moment to be a wrestling fan right now. Like, if you're a wrestling fan right now, this okay. is a time to watch it, to enjoy it. You I'm have it almost, almost six days a week to five days a week you have wrestling going on that you can watch and enjoy, you know, and, and, and you know, it's a wonderful time. That's why that's one of the things that we try to celebrate on uh, TFS Pod because we also talk about Impact Wrestling we talk about NXT sometimes. We do yeah. predictions for that for those shows. So yeah, it, it, yeah. Like I said, the the, the few brand, the, like was just of course the, the the mothership over here, the few show, is alive and well and exciting to be following right now. Which you, everyone out there watching, should subscribe. For sure. All right. Second match of the night, we had Alexa Bliss versus my what if wife oh. Eva Marie so recap on this one how it ended the pink haired heel my what if wife made the mistake of slapping Lily using a doll to make bliss drawn an impassioned furious response from the raw women's champion bliss shook off her near fall by Marie and scored the win off a spike DDT so Bliss defeated Eva Marie. Yeah, that was that was that was a no-brainer on that one. You know, you know, I, I don't we don't know what they're trying to do with Eva Marie. Alexa I know what Bliss I would do with Eva Marie. Since she became well, Alexa Bliss isn't doing ice I mean, cream. Eva, Take her out to get ice cream. <laughs> ice cream, all night. Eva Marie isn't doing anything. Alexa Bliss is coming off of uh, being the the fiend's uh, what is it like friend or something like that? She where she became like this. Fiendish yeah. kind of character, and then they get rid of the fiend, the, the, the guy who actually plays him, Bray Wyatt, which is insane. So you know you have to do something with this. Either you're gonna bury Alexa Bliss, or you're gonna push it more as a heel because yeah, that, that, that's how I feel that that, that, that women's division on Raw. So yeah. All right. What do you think, no, Jake? You... Well, oh, uh, hold on a second. 
Hello? Soy Fabulous? <laughs> yes. He's yes. not watching right uh, now. Bogey, um, Soy was watching the show live and she wanted to know what you were saying about Eva Marie again. Uh, what if? That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, Soy, uh, just, um, just don't worry about that. That hang was up, just, up, yeah, that's just acting. Okay, hang thank up, you. Hang up. Okay. Stay, 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 stay. Yeah, that, Hey, uh, Boogie, I think you're going to have to leave the house tonight. All right. <laughs> well, next, time, next time say, hey, uh, it's breaking up, it's breaking up, it's breaking up, and then hang up, man. Come on, bro. Look out for me, man. All right, the next match. United States Championship match. Damian Priest versus Sheamus. So Priest survived the heel hook, ripping the face mask from Sheamus to force the break. He delivered a big kick that rocked the champion and finish with a reconning of the win and the title. So Priest defeats Sheamus. Yeah, on this one, on this one, I'm gonna say it was an exciting match. It was almost like a, it was, it was a difficult move that Priest did out jumping outside of the ring. But uh, I thought he was not gonna make it, but yeah, he did make it, and he ha and and the, and the fans were behind him. This, this is how you pay back a guy who helped during that WrestleMania stuff going on in the summer with Brad Bunny. Who outshined him, which is kind of weird. Yeah. And this is how you pay him back. You know, you give him a title shot, and yeah, he won the title. Yeah, he he looked good, and and I think I could be mistaken, but there was like a, a part in the match where he hit his head pretty hard, and it looked like he was like he was legitimately hurt, and he yeah, continued no, he hit going. His hip. He hit his hip. Huh? He fell out of the ring and hit his hip really bad. Yeah, it looked like he was injured. Like he, yeah, it did, it did, it did, you know. Like, he, he looked like something happened to him, but he, man, he fought through it, and, and he gave it one of the best performances I've ever seen. Wow. And, you know, and you know, the, unfortunately, the, um, the following night on, on Raw, they used him to be a part of a match for the, for, the, for the WWE Championship instead of having him celebrate being the, what is it, the U.S. Championship he is now? Yeah. U.S. Champion? So I don't know. I mean, they got to work more on um, pushing that U.S. Championship. But yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's doing, doing a good push. It, it hasn't been pushed since those John Cena days when he was giving those open challenges. Yeah, yeah. And and you know and you know what? Uh, um, anybody that works with Sheamus is going to be in for a night because that guy is very stiff. He'll beat you up for real. But he puts on a great show. Yeah, no, he yeah. does. No, no, nothing. But he is hard hitting. He, he's you know the real deal. Yeah, J. Few too, and I agree. That's right. When he goes through a table, he looks great. Thank you, J. Few. That's what J. Few looks like. J. Few too looks like, by the way. After J. I, I, I like the surprise J. Few two character. Yes, I love it. <laughs> All right, next one: SmackDown Tag Team Championship match against the Mysterios and the Usos. So for this one, a super kick from Jimmy stunned the former world champion, and another in mid-flight. This one by J led to the top rope splash for a dramatic near fall. On the apron, Jay delivered a front suplex on the front apron, eliminating Dominic from the proceedings. A double super kick to Ray and a top rope splash by Jay preserved their title reign. The Usos defeating the Mysterios. So what do you guys think about that one? Hey man, the Usos, they are like at the top elite level. They're at their prime. Yeah. Oh, for sure. They're they're building that legacy towards the WWE Hall of Fame one day. So if anybody, if anybody loves tag team wrestling, you gotta watch the Uso brothers. Now, now for me, it was a short run having the Mysterious as champions. Like I guess it was just like a gimmick thing, like oh look, the first time father and son champions. But uh, it was a short run to their championship. Run. You know, the championship run was very cut short, very short. But it, it was to help build up the, the storyline with. Uh, the bloodline with Roman Reigns. So yeah, uh, okay, I'll, okay, Usos. Okay, okay. Didn't it, didn't that happen back in the day with Dusty Rhodes and 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 Dustin Rhodes? They were tag team champions at one time. Uh, was it in WWE? WCW maybe. Uh, oh, maybe that was different then. That's why. It's, well, this WWE now. I don't know. I I, I think I'm, I'm just trying to remember if it was, but yeah. Uh, I'm just curious to know, and, and, and I'm going to go to 24-7, uh, Lou, and uh, on this one, and maybe even Jay Few. But uh, uh, Dominic, what, what do you guys think that he's bringing to the table? Do, do you think that 
at one point when uh, Mysterio is not in the picture, that Dominic could be a, a potential, you know, wrestler to hold his own. What do you, uh, what do you guys see? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think. I don't think he's there yet. I don't. I don't really think he's there yet. How about heading to the direction? There, but I don't think he's there yet. Okay. I. I don't know. I'm kind of like with Lou and kind of. I mean, like, there is potential there. Yeah, potential. Okay. Uh, um, That's he's good. got his dad, of course. Um, always been there for him. He has that Guerrero family as well in the past so he's been around wwe like like the rock was when he was a little kid so i i just don't know i mean we'll have to see i mean i think that he's got definitely an advantage over the other guys that come yeah. from the indies i mean For he's sure. got that push and that may actually hurt him because the guys from the indies they have to start from the bottom and i don't think he's started from the bottom he's been just pushed over the mid card status so i don't know i i agree with you i don't i don't feel it yet okay so you said potential potential means you haven't done anything yet yeah exactly like 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 there's something there i'm mean, obviously his dad trained him and and he's got that advantage but i don't think he i don't think he has that hunger like what those guys like in the indies like era or um um you know, a lot of these guys that we've seen that they've had to bust their ass to get yeah. to the top, like Cha Cha Charlie. Oh my Look God. at that! He didn't even he didn't even make the PWI 500, and that yeah, guy's selling like that. tickets out everywhere. So you know, I don't know. Shout out to Cha Cha Charlie from the future. Shout out to Cha Cha Charlie, brother. Next match: SmackDown's Women Championship, Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch. So SmackDown Women's Champion Bianca Belair hit the ring for her advertised match against Sasha Banks only to find out the boss will not be competing that night. Carmella was introduced as the new challenger before the match could start. Becky Lynch made her long-awaited return to a thunderous ovation, joining uh, her opponent in the squared circle. Now Lynch dispatched Carmella and then issued a challenge to Belair for the championship match. So the EST accepted. Seconds later, she fell prey to a manhandle slam and Lynch captured the title after a single move. I don't know. This was, was a little bit too quick, too soon. Very yeah. unfortunate. Give me your take, fellas. Um, I mean, I, 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 I like you to bring him back Becky Lynch. Fine, but a heel, and then after pushing B Bianca Belair, get out of here with this stuff. I, you know, I don't want to talk about it. I'm so upset about this. Go ahead, JQ. JQ. It was, it was crazy. I mean, it was funny because even in our TFS pod chat, we were all arguing with each other about the point system and everything that was going to happen there. And then I think even during the midst of that argument, the match was already over. It was it like... Was. It was done. It was like... It was like, what was going on? Like, like... I was like, man, like they built this girl up and then they just took it away from her. You know, they bring Becky Lynch back. I don't know, man. I, I felt that was messed up, especially like at a SummerSlam. Come on, give the fans a good 20 minute match. You know? And those two oh, yeah. women have Where the potential. For Becky Lynch? Yeah, they no, they they have the potential. Yeah, more than that. They're they're fantastic. All right, so the next one here was the Drew McIntyre versus Jinder Mahal. And I'll tell you this, fellas, I, I, I enjoyed these two particular wrestlers. I've enjoyed what they have been doing the last, uh, you know, the last year or two. You know, the building of their wrestling potential, their character, their skill level. Uh, I mean, even the look, you know, you know, when you see Jinder Mahal, I mean, this guy has like, what, 10%, 5% body fat? Because everything is all muscle. So the modern day Maharaj downed Mick McIntyre, working him over in the center of the ring. He cut down the size, preventing of his legs to power a comeback. So the former WWE champ did fight back, though, and ultimately put Mahal away from Claymore before Shanky and Veer collected their vanquished leader. So McIntyre defeated Mahal. What do you fellas feel about this one? I mean, 
McIntyre and Jinder Mahal look like freaking He-Man figures. Amazing. They look, they look the part. They look amazing. Champion. Um, um, Drew McIntyre made easy work of uh, of uh, Jinder Mahal. It was, you know, I, I mean, those are the kind of guys that WWE has to hold on to now. Yeah, they have to. They've lost too many. They've lost too many, and they got to keep these guys going on with good storylines. Because if they keep losing guys like this, this company is going to be like WCW soon. That's it. Yep. 24 7 loop. For me, this was one of those other filler matches, I call them, where it was just give something for for um, Drew McIntyre to do. In the Mahal wasn't going anywhere. This was, oh, oh. A, this was a filler match. Did you see it? Did you see his face? What? Who? I saw the face of the ninja. Look. The full face? Yes. Oh, shoot. I missed it. The Ultimate Warrior's muscle was uh, blocking my view. Frick. <laughs> so, yeah. There. You saw... Yeah. This is what ha- this is what you call a filler match. Fine. McIntyre got the fight. Fine. Jinder Mahal. Just bring back Heath Slater and get 3MB back to the <laughs> There you go. 3MB, baby! Where is he, Slater? Is, is he a free agent? He's going to be in AEW okay. next week. Huh? He's an Impact, Impact. He's an Impact? Oh. Yeah, but I haven't seen him do anything in there. So wow. I, I, I don't know if he was cut or not. I, I heard he got hurt, but I don't know if he's still in there. Wow. All right, the next match. Triple threat match for the Raw's Women Championship. So we got... Ripley nursing the bum knee narrowly escaped defeat as the champions broke up Flair's figure four eight submission. Late, the champion tried for the crossbody that won her the title in the first place but crashed and burned. Flair seized the opening, applied the figure four, the figure eight, and earned the title number 12. So Flair defeated Ash and Ripley. Wow. Yeah, there yeah Nikki Ash, which is still. a Nikki Ash, another character that was it's so ridiculous, the stupidness of Nikki Ash. She was Nikki Cross. They don't call her Cross because you have Terry and Cross who's in there now. Ah. And, and it's like so now you call her Nikki Ash, almost a superhero, which was which won the championship after cashing in the money in the bank. And nobody liked. Everywhere she went, she was getting booed. Everybody sees through this, through this joke of a, of a character that, that someone else created for her. She's doing it, you know, she's doing her job, but fine. But yeah, now now you put stability, stability back with the championship by having Charlotte Flair hold it. Hold the championship. And let's see if Alexa Bliss will challenge her, which I think is something that we can be seeing very soon. Yeah, I mean, this gimmick thing with, uh, I think she's the Hurricane's daughter. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but, almost a superhero. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just silly gimmick stuff that people don't want to see. That's why people are flipping to AEW. Um, Charlotte is the biggest name in women, women's wrestling. Yeah. So, I mean, she's just above. She's just look, a step above all the other girls, and look, she's just look. an amazing performer. And she's really out. She's pretty much catching up to her dad's legacy. So. I mean, that was an easy win. I mean, not easy win because all those women did a great job in the ring, but she was, you know, she's just a great character and a great performer. So kudos to her. And I, I'm a little bit upset about that, you know, you have Rhea Ripley there coming up from NXT and you give her the push. She had the championship for a while. It was pretty cool when she had it. Then she loses it to Nikki Ash. And then now Charlotte Flair has it. It's like, come on, do something. If you're going to build them up, build them up right. Keep them up as champions. Yeah, exactly. You know, having Charlotte Flair there. Yeah, yeah. Rhea Ripley Charlotte is Flair. also another great, you know, wrestler. She's just really come up, you know, and they're not really giving her, like, the push that she needs, you know. They gave it to her and, and they took it away. That's what it is. They yeah. They gave it to her and then took it away. Yeah, that's crazy. So our next match, we got we got three more matches to go. So we got the Edge versus Seth Rollins. So in this one, as it ended, Rollins tried the Phoenix Splash, but Edge rolled out of the way and delivered her spear for two as the disbelief and frustration set in. 
Rollins tried for the stomp again, but Edge stopped him and applied the Educator. He applied a cross face, smashing Rollins' face into the mat before forcing the tap out for the win. The result was Edge defeated Rollins. Gentlemen. Well, these guys are two of the best wrestlers in the whole wrestling oh, industry. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, we would love to see dream matches with Seth and um, some guys from AEW, of course. Hey, Omega. Yeah, I mean, wow. I mean that would be awesome. Or Edge what or whatever. Do I don't know. It, it, this was kind of like the match of the night, probably. It was a great match. I mean, awesome. I loved it. Yeah. Now, for my take on this stuff, it was a, it was a, it was a good match. I thought that um, Seth Rollins would win, but no, Edge won. And to keep everyone updated, uh, we had that match occurred on SummerSlam. Well, a few weeks have gone by, and now we had the showdown on the Super SmackDown show at MSG, which was on a Friday night, and it was an amazing match with uh, Seth Rollins versus Edge, and it ended. Ended. I mean, you should watch this match. You're like, it was a really exciting match to watch. It ended with Seth Rollins going for the win and probably hurting or paralyzing Edge in the ring, and he was taken away. What? Wait, wait. When was this? Uh, on Friday Night SmackDown. This was uh, this Friday on SmackDown. Yep. Oh wow. He did that. Did he do that? That that power bomb into the corner thing? Is what? Is that what you're talking about? No, no, he, 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 he gave him a kick. Yeah, well, he did a kick to the face of Edge and then did a curb stomp. Oh. Um, wow. Yeah, All right, guys. It was, it was brutal. We're here to our last five minutes. So the next match is the WWE Championship where we had Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley. So Lashley grabbed the chair, attacked the damaged leg of his opponent, unloaded with repeated shots as the referee attempted to stop him. Goldberg's son, Gage, jumped in the ring and paid for it in the form of the Hurt Lock. Lashley defeated Goldberg by referee stoppage. You know, I'm tired. What was that? You know, no, I'm just tired of seeing Bill Goldberg in any ring. It's just like a disappointment and it's taking away from a guy like maybe like Cesaro who can be on that show versus Goldberg. I mean, that was like, it. The, the match sounds great in a WWE video game, but when they put it out in real life, it was just terrible on Goldberg's part. And Bobby Lashley is phenomenal. Look at him. He's like at the peak yeah. of his, guy's in his 40s too. Still and he's, right. he's just, look at him. He's just, he looks the part, he looks great. And he's, he really, I hope they don't take the belt from him. I, I think he can still do, a bit of things and build up his title ring. Lou? Yeah, uh, for the match number two of the night, I think. Uh, yeah, Goldberg has no business being inside that ring. And unfortunately, we might be seeing him again in the future, again, filling up some match somewhere for a big payday. So yeah, I don't want to waste my time talking about the rest of it. All right, I, I mean, for myself, you know what? I, I mean, you guys know me as you hear everything that I, that I have said. I'm a nostalgia guy. I, 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 you know what? They bring back Goldberg. He goes ahead and uh, gets ready for the matches. He does his matches. But well, what do we expect from a Goldberg? Even in the prime of a Goldberg, we we expect that Mike Tyson type of match. The one, two, three. In the in the first few minutes of match, it is over. So you know what? Uh, you know, bring him on. But I kind of agree. I mean, it's a balance. You know, you, you can't be, like, hurting certain wrestlers with, uh, you know, Goldberg coming on. So maybe Goldberg needs to be matched with, with a, a wrestler that is not going to hurt that they go through a Goldberg, uh, you know, three-minute match, which is, which is what we know we expect, including the, the, the walk-in. So that's, that's part of the nostalgia of Goldberg. As soon as that door gets hit, he comes in. The thing, is, the thing is, is that even though he does get ready for his his event or whatever, it doesn't seem like he's training like like a wrestler should be. Therefore, he could be he could he could be injuring guys. I know, 
I know, it's tricky. It's look, tricky. Look, look, look. We, they, they, they say Goldberg in the match, but we get Oldberg in the match. <laughs> it's obvious. It's obvious. It's obvious. All right. So let's move on to our last match here because we got a few minutes left for this segment here of the topic. And this is the Universal Championship match with John Cena versus Roman Reigns. So let's end this with one last fury by Cena. Proved to be unsuccessful as Reigns stunned him with the consecutive Superman punches and a spear for the pinfall victory. Now, after the match, you guys know because you were there, Brock Lesnar made a stunning return with his stunning hair, pumping, pump, popping the crowd and leaving Reigns and Paul Heyman retreating to the locker room. So give us those last thoughts so we can wrap up this topic. Man, that was, uh, um, you know, seeing John Cena again come back and fight um, um, Roman Reigns for the cha championship was a lot of fun. Yes. Um, Any, you notice now that whenever John Cena comes back, there's no booze. Everybody loves him. Like he's we just such a him. big, yeah, he's just such a big deal, um, and it just like uplifts the company. Where whenever he comes back, like people oh, just sure. and, and and another big thing, kudos to Cena, is that he was actually during this time when he came back, he was working house shows. And, and oh wow I, yeah he was working house shows and, and and he didn't have to do that we know wow. what a big of a star John Cena is but you know how I much do that. he loves and breathes and dies wrestling um I didn't think he was gonna win that match of course because he was gonna leave but um yeah it was a fun match to watch and then at the end watching Brock Lesnar come out was also a lot of fun I like the new mustache and the beard he looked like a Mr Montoya. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he, I, I he's been watching your, your style, man. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So I should get copyrighted on that shit. <laughs> 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 All right. All right, guys. So that is SummerSlam brought to you straight from the few members right here and our take on how this uh, amazing, uh, you know, second, one of the second biggest WWE pay per views. Uh, you know, came went down, and uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So, uh, you know, I, I, and I would, I will have to give kudos to TFS Pod, uh, twenty four seven, Lou Rickard, and OMB. You know, you guys always uh, putting out those picks and and letting us join. And this was uh, one that that I definitely kind of I, I felt it in me that you know what, even though I got second place, hey bro, let, let me talk to you, Jay, uh, twenty four seven, Lou, for a second. What's up with second place, man? Second place, you get something, man. It, it's not easy to make it to second place because third, fourth, and fifth. I mean, I mean that shit is whatever. That's garbage. But I oh, mean, okay, I think okay. you guys oh, need to rethink. Oh, oh, you want something? Oh, you want something for being second place? Some about a half a point. Oh, no, no, no. What you get for second place is you get you get to become number one. Half a point. No, no. You get you get to become number one. You get to become the first loser. Out of every other loser, you're the first loser. Second no, place. No, because no. third, That's fourth, place fifth place, place can have yeah. the, the yeah. loser status. The winner, you have the winner and then the rest of the losers. So out of the losers, you're the, <laughs> you're the oh. first loser out of the other one. So you're hey, number buddy. one, buddy. You got it. Hey, nobody. buddy, nobody no remembered. For you. No point. No <laughs> Nobody cared that Johnny came in second place at the All Valley Karate Championships, okay? <laughs> so go take that home with you and no sit. That was a good one, man. Oh my god, Karate Kid, man. Hey, hey, we could talk about Karate Kid in another place. But anyway. That could be a whole other separate show. Oh, for sure, brothers. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much here, uh gentlemen, JFU247 you for contributing here to this topic number two, which Did was the Oh, I, said, I thought Lou was trying to say something. Uh, so thank you guys for watching here. This season six, episode 51. After almost a year and a half of uh, coming back from our last episode. And uh, gentlemen, I really enjoyed it. JFU247 Lou. Uh, thank you guys for suggesting that let's, let's get back together. Even if it's in this capacity. 
Especially this time, 24-7 Lee wasn't locked outside the building. Now, now we're all locked out. Virtually. Now we're all locked out. Hey. We're all locked out, but we're in together. <laughs> I had to get ready myself for this show. It was so big. I had to copy Lou and I had to get my own Yeti microphone, boy, baby. Oh, nice. Big fat Yeti microphone right here. Ah. All right. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I, I think we had a lot of fun. So, uh, I mean, what, would you guys say that uh, that we're going to be doing a few a few more episodes? A few more episodes. That's it. So this is your man, Captain Bogey, saying, enough said. And I got J Few saying, until the next time, guys, tune in to the number one show that has the Few Fast Five Fanatic face off. Nice. And we got 24 7 Lou saying, <laughs> nice. All right, guys. So thank you guys again for watching here. This is topic number two of the. Oh, let me stop this thing right here. Go! <laughs>